Hey, welcome back. We're in the home stretch, so what we're going to do is put on everything that goes onto the belly of the case, starting with the parking linkage, and then we we'll install check balls, uh, three four accumulator piston, and then we'll do a case air check, and then once that's done, uh, we'll do our uh, spacer plate, valve body, and pretty much everything else. You know, install the governor, and you know, wrap everything up with the pan and the filter. All right, so for the parking linkage, if you haven't already done this, uh, you can go ahead and install the selector shaft seal. Some folks like to do this straight away, others don't. But um, I actually usually install this before I do anything else. I just you know didn't do it this time. Uh, you can install it with a bushing driver or a 9th 16th socket. Main thing is you want to get it as square as possible, and then you know be authoritative when you smack it in. because if you don't, they will bend on you. Uh, I have you know, a whole bin full of these, but this is one of those items that, you know, like bushings and you know, maybe different thicknesses of steels, you know, for various clutches, specifically uh, the 3-4, that if you um, are building one of these for the first time, you wanna have maybe some extras of those, so. All right, next, just go ahead and install your selector shaft. And then, you know, put it in part way like that. So I can get you a little bit better angle here. So next, your rooster comb and your parking rod. So your rooster comb is going to have the little um, arm for your uh, manual valve linkage. So you want to take your parking rod and you want to put it on the same side, just like this. Okay, and then all this is going to face the worm tracks. All right, and then grab your Retaining nut and your little spacer. And you may have to, depending upon how far that selector shaft goes in, you know, move it around a few times before all said and done. So this is a 15 millimeter nut. And then you're just gonna press your spacer on and then tighten up the nut. Not sure what the torque spec on this is, but if you get it really, really good and tight, then it's not gonna have an issue. It's not gonna come loose. All right, next we'll install the rod guide, so two 13 millimeter bolts. So this made in Canada sign or whatever it says there faces up. And then Depending upon you know where your output shaft is and you know the parking pull's relationship to the lugs on the ring gear, you may have to spin the output shaft so that you can get access to this you know more recessed bolt. Another one of those deals where if it's really cinched up well, regardless of what the spec is, it's not going to come loose.
So you just want to test it. All right. All right, next thing we'll do is we're gonna start to install all the check balls in the case along with the uh, three, four accumulator. So first things first, lube up the bore thoroughly and then lube the entire surface of the worm tracks. So we're going to install, and because I like to forget these, our two case filter screens. So one goes in this location. Which I think the old filter screen is still in there. And then the other one is going to go in this location right here. So those just take a drift and just lightly tap them, you know, until they're fully seated. Okay, next is gonna be the third accumulator, excuse me, the fourth accumulator piston. And the way I do these is put the pin in, put the original spring in place, and then I will put the piston upside down over top of it. 700R4, 4L60Es, you really don't need as much accumulation as the factory gives you. You want that shift to be a little bit crisper than how it is originally so that you don't stress your band. And this is going to stick up a little bit, that's fine. No big deal. Once the plate's on and the valve body and everything else is on, it'll seat right in position. But um, what we're doing here is we're minimalizing the accumulation so that the 3-4 um, shift can happen sooner. Okay, we don't want that, that shift to last uh, as long as it does <clears throat> coming from the factory. Okay, next are case check balls. So I just put the big TV safety check ball back in. I mean, it's up to you. You really don't need it. But at the same token, if you do have one of those situations, Murphy's Law strikes and your TV cable snaps while you're out driving around, this safety ball will uh, seat and will protect the transmission from burning up. Because uh, what it does is it actually maxes the line pressure so that you can limp the vehicle home and then, you know, fix or replace your TV cable. Okay, this bathtub here is not going to take a check ball because this is an 88 and up unit. Or I should say late 87 and up unit, they eliminated the um, need for a check ball at this location. The spacer plate has one circular hole and one square hole in that position. Here's your 3-4 check ball. And then you're going to have one check ball down here in this bathtub location. And then I'm going to put the low reverse check ball back into its position here. And normally I'd leave that out, but because in this 
In this uh, build, I had to use an early style cushion plate in the reverse input. Uh, I want to make sure that the engagement in the forward is not too harsh. Okay, there's two more check bowls on the bench and those are for the valve body. All right, next we're gonna grab the case gasket. So there's two different types of gaskets for the 700R4. This is the kind to be used with an auxiliary valve body. It's striped, so very, very recognizable. Uh, if you have an early 700, 82 to early 87 with no auxiliary valve body, um, your gasket will not have anything up here other than bolt hole locations, and it will not have a stripe on it. So paper and rubber kits come with both sets, so you just need to know which set to use based on you know, your year application. In fact, this might have to go in before this piston. And of course I can't get it out. I think when this seats, yeah, this this will seat fully, so worrying about nothing. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is, while I'm at it, install the case connector. So you want to put a new O-ring on your case connector. Then put a little assembly lube on the connector itself, and then likewise in the bore. So this is gonna install from the top of the case, although it's upside down, uh, but basically you're just gonna line up this flat with the corresponding flat on the case and then it'll seat as it should. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is bolt a test plate to the case so that we can air check the entire case. But before we do that, I'm actually going to install the governor because that's actually part of the air check. So just put your new O-ring seal on the cover. And put a bunch of assembly lube on the governor shaft and gear. And as I mentioned in the teardown video, but in case you hadn't watched it, you see this dimple here. Uh, what this does is it sets uh, governor longitudinal travel. So if your cover is like dented or damaged in any way, uh, do not run it because uh, if the governor can't spin or it can't move as it was designed to move in that bore, then you're either not going to have any upshifts or they're going to be real erratic. So. You know, I just want to make sure that uh, you use <clears throat> a cover that's in good serviceable shape. Now, most of these 700s had a retainer clip, uh, as you see a little notch cut in for it, but some of them did not have a corresponding, you know, hole location to locate and seat the top of the retainer. And this core, when it came in, didn't have one, so... So this is what I use to install them. 
This is just simple three inch inner diameter and outer diameter exhaust adapter. Uh, I think I bought this at either O'Reilly's or AutoZone years and years ago. But um, I use that with a Kentmore press tool, uh, J29376-7. I have no idea what this is actually intended to be used for, but it makes a perfect governor installation tool. Or I should say governor cover installation tool. So just a few healthy smacks, and that should seed it. Uh, not so healthy that I'm moving the camera. Apologize for that. So I'm going to use a rounded off chisel so that I can see anywhere along the cover here and on the perimeter where it's just a little bit of a gap. And I'll do my best to hold this thing from moving. When I flip the case over, I'll check the top side, but it's seated enough for now. So just check it. Okay, as you can hear those weights and springs move freely. It's not bound up, nothing wrong with it. So here's a test plate. This is what we'll use to validate that all the clutch packs will apply with the case fully assembled, assuming that the valve body and, you know, auxiliary valve body and everything else that goes to this thing are on there. Air is once again going to be used as a proxy for uh, applied fluid and we'll confirm or deny if there's any problems and if there are, of course, we'll go in and fix them. So let me get that on and then we'll uh, come back and do the check. All right, so now we'll begin the air check. Get you a little bit closer. Okay, so now we'll begin the air check. So we have forward overrun. 3-4 reverse input and then second and fourth gear band apply and release and then you have your 3-4 accumulator and accumulator release so we're just going to check the apply circuits and 
Yeah, it's overrun. So this is for non-auxiliary valve bodies on the forward. Should still work though. Hey, I could hear it. Maybe not as easy to tell through the video, but it is applying and this is how it normally sounds if you're using this particular plate on an auxiliary valve body unit. Okay, three fours. Reverse input. And then we'll do bands. That was second, here's fourth. My nozzle right now is not in the greatest shape, so I'm getting a lot of air blowing out of it, you know, right here on the back of it, actually. Uh, this is just an old piece of vacuum hose. And that's a 3-4. 3-4 accumulator. And then your low reverse. We already tested that. So everything appears to be applying exactly as it should. Uh, like I said, with the forwards, um, this plate was originally designed for a non-auxiliary valve body 700R4. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know where um, one for an auxiliary valve body can be found, but it will work. You just you got to put a lot of air through it because technically there's no feed hole here where this um, location in the plate is. So anyway, uh, everything's good. So we can now proceed with uh, installing. The wiring harness, the valve body, um, auxiliary valve body, spacer plate, all that good stuff and finish up this thing. All right, we'll put the uh, case gasket back on. And the spacer plate. So I won't go too much into detail about the information you see here on the plate itself. I'll do a wholly separate video where I'll dive deep into um, considerations for hole sizes and like what to drill and to what extent based on application. But um, I'll leave you with uh, two important details now. So you have a hole right here, which is the uh, third exhaust or band release hole. Right, let me get a little bit closer. So third exhaust, AKA band release. And then you have your two, three feet hole up here. You'll notice they're both drill 110 thousandths. You don't ever want to have a disparity between uh, the size of the hole between these two hole, uh, hole locations. The reason for that is this hole here receives fluid upon the 2-3 shift to push the servo and pin off of the band. This uh, port feeds the third clutch apply piston. If you don't have sufficient amount of um, uh, fluid flow through here, these clutches in the 3-4 are going to fully compress before the band had a chance to fully release the drum. And when that happens, you will have anything from a flare shift to a full-on bind-up between the band and the 3-4 clutch pack. And if the whole size uh, difference is significant enough, you will burn your band and your 3-4 uh, clutches pretty quickly. So just keep that in mind. That's the first thing. The second thing, keep your hole size for your 1-2 feed uh, less than 93 thousandths or 93 thousandths or less. If you're working with a largely stock build with a stock stall converter, uh, otherwise your part throttle 1-2 shifts will be overly harsh. So I put this information on all these 700 R's that I do um, more so than even like the TH 350s and 400s because it usually takes some iterative tweaking, you know, revisions to hole sizes and things like that to get everything dialed in. Especially if there's, um, you know, the transmission is going to be in a more performance-oriented application. Uh, in this particular case, because it's a, you know, just mostly a stocker, the engine's like a um, 
250, 275 horsepower, 283. There's not going to be um, a huge amount of power, a huge amount of RPMs. It's mostly going to be, like I say, a, a weekend car that's um, driven occasionally. It's not necessary to um, do anything beyond what Transgo recommends. And, and that's the other thing. I mean, if you're, you know, building one of these for the first time, um, I would strongly recommend that you purchase the Transgo Junior Shift Kit and you follow the instructions to a T. It's a very reliable kit um, for the 700. Uh, in my opinion, Transgo hit the uh, ball out of the park on that one. I mean, it makes dealing with the 700Rs a lot easier than it otherwise would have been without that kit. Um, you know, it's, its primary claim to fame is that TV valve, uh, the newly designed TV valve that they give you, along with the, um, you know, stop stick springs. Definitely helps. All right, we're going to put on the auxiliary valve body. So you see this check ball here. Sometimes this is captured, sometimes it's not. If it's not, make sure you put a whole bunch of assembly lube in there. Use the... Uh, uh, the green stuff and that will make sure that it does not come out and whatever you do don't forget it if you do this is your forward um, clutch feed check ball and if you don't have that in there you're going to have a bind up between first and second gear two 10, mil 10 millimeter bolts and one 8 millimeter bolt And then once this is torqued up, I gotta torque the spec those three eight millimeter bolts on the cover. So don't let me forget that. If you're gonna run an impact to get your bolts in, just run like a quarter inch impact like this and keep it on a medium setting. I mean, you're not gonna strip anything out or damage anything. But I wouldn't use like a 3 8 impact or anything like that. Okay, here's your one-two accumulator. One thing I'll mention about these, in particular the springs that come in the shift kit for it, if you're gonna be um, building something that's going to see a lot of RPM or a lot of power, I wouldn't recommend using the Transgo springs. I've had them break on me um, enough times to where I think it's worth mentioning. So, as I struggle to get this to fully seat, that will be my, my tip there for the um, the one two. Other than that, like in normal stock applications, it's not anything you have to worry about. It's really just more of like uh, anything high performance, anything that's going to see a lot of hard launches, a lot of wide open high RPM one two shifts. Is what you need to be concerned about. If it won't go down with the impact on that kind of setting, then I would just use a ratchet. This way you don't accidentally strip anything out.
what I'm doing is I'm backing off all of these holes or all of these bolts. Just want to make sure that that, that gasket is, is perfectly aligned. All right, it seems to be. Like anything else, when it comes to building transmissions, it never hurts to double check. Lord knows I have made my fair share of mistakes. And I've also caught my fair share by double checking. Kent Moore makes alignment tools for these, um, you know, valve body, spacer plate gaskets and um, I mean, if you want, you can buy them, but they're not needed. Just, you can use the bolts. They work just as good. And they cost nothing. Okay, all these bolts, except for that little eight millimeter, I tend to torque that to 80 inch pounds, but the rest of them, including the valve body bolts, all get 98 inch pounds as do the uh, wiring harness or excuse me uh, TCC solenoid bolts and the pan bolts. So all bolts except for the 8 millimeters get 98 inch pounds. I'll do 80 inch pounds on that small 8 millimeter and I'll I'll go to 70 and if it feels good then I'll just leave it. Uh, nothing's gonna leak, you're not gonna have a problem. And then for these, I'll do 60 and then I'll um, take them to 70. And again, it's the same deal. If 60 feels like, okay, that's enough, then I'll leave it at 60. And likewise, they're not gonna come loose. side, a little bit more room. Back it down to 70 on this little 8 millimeter. And honestly, that feels good. And then down to 60 for these bolts. Take them to 70 and leave them there. <laughs> 